this week's National Collegiate Player of the Week, Boston College quarterback Doug Flutie, one of the nation's finest collegiate quarterbacks. He passed for three touchdowns, 227 yards last week. And this evening, he is wanted by the Bruise Brothers, the nation's most renowned tag team at nose guard. Clemson's William Perry, 6'3", 320 pounds, and William Devane, 6'2", 275. They patrol the middle of the defense like they own it. It's a sellout crowd here at Alumni Stadium, 32,000 strong to view the Clemson Tigers versus Boston College. Sports presents Clemson Tiger football. Today it's the Clemson Tigers against the Boston College Eagles from Alumni Stadium in Boston, Massachusetts. This Raycom Sports exclusive is brought to you by your local Burger King restaurant where you can get delicious flame broiled burgers fixed your way. Aren't you hungry for Burger King now? Welcome to Miller Time. Boston College Eagles now on the field here at Alumni Stadium in Boston, Massachusetts on the campus of Boston College. Hello, everybody. I'm Art Ekman. And working with me, former pro linebacker Kevin Kiley. And Kevin, as a former linebacker, you've got to spot the fact that this Boston College offense is centered around one individual and almost one individual only. A lot of players for Boston College, but the key is definitely quarterback Doug Flutie. I would say the burden and the hopes of the Boston College fans for this season fall on the small but very capable shoulders of Flutie. And while his arm and his speed and his size get most of the publicity, it's his feet that are the key tonight. If he can stay on him long enough to complete a pass, Boston College is going to be tough. Well, teams don't like to run against the Clemson defense. Uh, they just have a tough time with it. How does this match up with the Clemson defense? The Eagles match up very well, and Flutie is the reason. Uh, Boston College doesn't run the ball. They don't like to run the ball. They want to go on top. If Clemson has a weakness defensively, and that's stretching it a bit, it's got to be in the, in, the, uh, under in the under defensive secondary and the pass rush, and Flutie can take advantage of both of those. And, of course, essentially, both teams had an easy time of it in that first game. This could be the real first test for the coaches to see what they have for the 1983 season. We'll be back with a kickoff from Alumni Stadium right after this. For the Eagles. And deep. It's Stacy Drivey on the near side. And we got Ray Williams on the far side standing on the goal line. Some excited fans here at the stadium ready as Waldman comes forward. And this game is underway. High over and it goes to Driver deep in the end zone. And he will not take it out. First and 10 Clemson at their own 20 yard line. Let's take a look now at the Clemson Tiger offense. First of all, the quarterback is Mike Epley after a great first weekend last week. Flagler, tremendous running at that tailback spot and the blocker back at the fullback. Flanker, so important. Alley, Butler, and Dunn, other receivers in the offense for the Tigers. And the all-important line, Engel, Farr, ACC player of the week on offense. Swing, Cheatham, and Truce. Stacy Driver now is in at tailback. Mike Epley back. Intended for Alley. We've got a penalty flag down. All right, this could possibly be pass interference. We're going to take a look at it. The pass was right on the mark, and the defensive player, no, they're not going to call uh, pass interference. Here goes Epley back. He has a man open, tries to hit him. Good defense, it looks like. Penalty's going to be on Clemson. Ineligible That's a procedure. Receiver. Ineligible receiver. Ineligible receiver downfield, and we'll start it all over again now as Clemson gets the first play away. And it'll be the loss of down second and 15 now for Clemson. Ball placement at the 15-yard line, of course. Swing, Dale swing over the ball at center. That's driver. Driver. 
Weber is met by Diossi. Here's the defensive front for Boston College. Thomas, Errington, Ruth, tremendously exciting player up front of the nose guard. Swanky. Then the linebackers. Diossi, we'll see him in there a lot. Von Nessen. And the defensive backfield. They could play an important part in this game. The option play with Epley now. Good move by the defense for the Eagles. On the third and 14, Rob Swanky from his right tackle spot. Good lateral strength movement. Exactly the position you don't want to get in in the first series. It happened to Western Carolina last week against Clemson. This week it was the Tigers. Third and long, and you don't want to be in that position. Hatcher, Dale Hatcher, the putter. Gets a nice high floating kick away. Brian Brennan is deep, takes it at the 32. Brennan swarmed under there. Jeff Suttle making the tackle for the Tigers. And so Boston College now takes over with pretty good field position on about the 38-yard line. The offense, of course, we've mentioned uh, many times, Doug Flutie at quarterback, Stratford, your tailback, Visek is the fullback. Here are the receivers, Brian Brennan, the favorite target of Flutie, and the men up front with a fine Boston College offense. Stratford. And he makes it just over the 40-yard line. Edgar Pickett making the tackle from his left-end spot. He had four tackles in the opening game of the season last week. We mentioned up front, Boston College is not a running team, but in order to play against Clemson and be able to score, they're going to have to show some kind of run. That was the I formation. They tried to tell back Clemson, true to their reputation, right there for the stop. Second down, six yards to go for Boston College out of the I formation. Moody dropping straight back, and it's knocked down up front. Well, five Looks like nine. Jim Scott might have got a hand on it, and uh, James Robinson also in there. Robinson, 6'5", once he put those hands in the air, can be a pretty good obstacle. The defensive front now for Clemson. Pickett, Robinson, Devane, Brown, and Mack with the two freshman redshirt linebackers. Jim Scott now is in at right tackle. And there's the defensive secondary for you. So third down, six yards to go for Boston College. Just into the first quarter of action. Big rush by Perry, but the pass is complete. Childers made the stop on Brennan. Brennan was seven catches last week for 149 yards. You're going to see the keys to this game, both keys. There's Flutie and Perry. They're both keys. Flutie wins this one as he throws a perfect pass with 320 pounds bearing down on him. First down, B.C. Childers, the senior two-year letterman. First down for Boston, just inside the 50. Perry nosed up with Bicknell. Bicknell, the snap. Stratford, the carry. Childers almost got him behind the line of scrimmage, and it's out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Tyrone Davis along with Edgar Pickett to make the stop. Poor tackling by Clemson. They defense that play very well, stretched it out to the sideline, but when they had their opportunity to drop him for a loss, they couldn't come up with the tackle. Second and seven now for the Eagles. Childers, out of the three tackles last week, had one for a loss of minus four yards against Western Carolina. That time, he bounced off the runner. Troy Stratford, he's only a 5'8 sophomore. Slot to the far side. Stratford's the man in motion. Flutie gets the big rush and dumps it off to Stratford. Nice cut from the tackle made by Terrence Mack. James Robinson also in on the stop. How quick Flutie is. Perry again uh, just blowing through the line. Flutie with a little stagger step and found his outlet receiver. Picked up a few yards. Third and short. Three yards to go for the Boston first down. The ball on the 43-yard line. Devane. Comes in for Perry at nose guard. Stratford is back in the I formation tailback spot. Flutie likes to roll. He's going to tuck it under his arm. Good tackle. Fumble on the ball. Race. Jimmy Scott was racing for the football, and he comes up with it along with Henry Walls. 
All right, they talk about Clemson's freshman linebackers. Watch Henry Walls make a great play here. Flutie can run for a first down. Walls will shed the blocker and hit Flutie, forces the ball loose. Clemson comes up with it, and that's a big play for the Tigers early in the game. Jim Scott, the 6'4", 250-pound senior, making the recovery. Big break for Clemson here in the early going. After they had their ears pinned back on the first series, they now get the ball inside Boston College territory at the 48. Stacy Driver up the middle has the nice hole and makes his way down to the 36-yard line. Last week, we talked about Clemson being more diversified on offense. But be mindful of the fact that they've run the ball 77% of the time for the last two years, 81 and 82. That's their strength, and that's what they want to do. So after the David Thomas stop, it's another first down for Clemson. Ball placement on the 37-yard line. Pull back up the middle, Mack, Kevin Mack. Clemson testing that middle right away. Well, Diossi is the strength of the uh, BC defense, and if they can attack that defense at, at its strength, which is Diossi in the middle there, and gain yardage, they're gonna cause some problems for the Eagles. They'll have to make adjustments to their strength. Alley to the far side, Butler to the near side. It'll be a second down, six yards to go for the Tigers. Ball on the 33. That's Driver, and Driver just makes it back to the 30. A gain of two yards on the play. Von Nessen got the initial hit on Driver. He's a 6'2", 228-pound senior at that right linebacker spot. Yeah, so, so quick is Driver. Lubisher was in the backfield, number 93. Had a shot at him, but uh, Stacy just showed him an ankle, took it away, and he was off around the left end. Back to fullback, Stacy Driver in at tailback. Epley, your quarterback now. That's Driver. The hole closed up very, very quickly. Scott Harrington at left tackle wearing a linebacker number. Number 52. He's 256 pounds and six foot two, a two-year letterman at junior. And Pauling will come in to try for the field goal. Bob Pauling. 40 straight extra points and a terrific field goal kicker. Peretti will be the holder. The ball placement down at the 37-yard line. It is up and it barely makes it over. It's good. Had good height on the kick. And Pauling, Bob Pauling from St. Matthews, South Carolina, puts Clemson on the board. Three to nothing with nine minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports Network. A kickoff for Clemson after the 47-yard field goal by Bob Pauling. We've got Ken Bell along with Tyrone Taylor deep. And now Taylor stays deep. Bell coming up to about the 20-yard line, I guess just to converse with uh, Besick. As we get set to kick off, three to nothing Clemson. Art, so important uh, to get out on top in this game. If Clemson can get the lead and get up by seven or ten points, they can run the ball. They can dictate to Boston College with their offense. If they were to fall behind the Boston College and have to go to the air exclusively, you might consider them in a bad position. So that three points, although it's not much of a lead, is a pretty big three points at this, at this juncture in the game. Okay, Igloy Buike kicked six out of his eight kickoffs last week, which were unreturnable. Let's see what he can do now. Goodbye, Tyrone Taylor watches it go out of the end zone. Boston College first and 10 at their own 20. Igwe Buike. A lot of people just call him Donald. Once again, <laughs> puts it through the end zone. Igwe Buike was kicking 63-yard field goals in the pregame and laughing about it with plenty of, plenty of distance to spare, so that's no surprise. Bicknell, Jack Bicknell, the son of the coach over the ball at center. He's a 6'1", 254-pound junior, snaps the ball. Tailback offense once again. Stratford, Troy Stratford, met by Henry Walls. One of the things that Flutie does for an offense, even an offense that's running the ball, is he makes the defense think. Is this guy going to roll out? Is he going to throw it? Is he going to run himself? And when you have to think, you hesitate half a step, and that can make your running game even a little bit better. So it's not that surprising that the Eagles are running on first down. Brennan to the near side, McKenzie to the far side. A game of three. Second down and seven now for Flutie. Stratford. 
Crawford once again. Devine got the first hand on him, took his shoe off. Bradford saying, it's bad enough you tackle me, don't undress me, too. <laughs> James Robinson also having an effect, of course, as all linemen do on a play like that. Well, that play was either ill-conceived or it, it just didn't go properly. It, it looked like a half pitch, and it's not the type of play, uh, a slow-developing play to run on Clemson. They're too quick. Third down and five for Boston College. He looks for Brennan. Get it out. Brian Brennan couldn't get a handle on it, so Boston College forced the punt once again. Tyrone Davis on the coverage. Coverage on that play art was not all that good. If that ball had been a little lower, Brennan had a little room on the sideline, could have gone all the way. You can look for that play again. John Mahalik, the putter, he's averaging 37.5 a game in that first game of the year against Morgan State. Shanks it, short, end over end. Another good field position for the Clemson Tigers here in the first quarter with seven minutes and 48 seconds still remaining. Clemson scoring on an 18 yard drive in four plays getting the field goal leading the contest three to nothing. Two mistakes by Boston College's offense. The punter is an offensive player. That's a bad punt. Flutie's, uh, Flutie's fumble just a few plays ago and Clemson good field position on both those mistakes. Can't do that against a quality team like the Tigers. Mack, your lone uh, setback now. Ray Williams to the near side. In motion is Flagler. Mack has a good opening. What a block at the line of scrimmage that time. It's Mack. Touchdown. No flags. Let's check out the block at the line of scrimmage. Okay, there are not many teams that have a fullback that can go outside from an eye formation. Watch the block at the corner. Watch Mac come around. He has a lot of room. Looks like and there it is right there. Number 61 laying out. Sheet him. Now watch the bad tackling here. You can't push this guy down. He's too big. He's got great balance. Actually held him along to the goal line. And there he goes. Kevin Mack for a touchdown. Number 61 cheat him with a terrific block at the corner. Freddy holding the kick by Pauling is up. And it is good. He now has 41 straight extra points of flag though on the play. It was against Boston College. It'll count. And with seven minutes and 39 seconds to be played here in the first quarter, it's a nine to nothing ball game for Clemson. One play all the way, a 42 yard drive. Ten to nothing. The field goal and the touchdown by Mack and the extra point. Well, we're we're well, at. It took him nine seconds. Well, we're at Boston College, you know. And to get up ten to nothing against a team as highly touted as the Eagles. Remember, they were eight two and one last year. This is a big jump for Clemson. There had to be a little bit of a confidence problem. The uh, the Tigers were winning fourteen to nothing at the half last year. The Eagles came back and tied them. And in fact, that's the last game that Clemson did not win. So when you think about it, they come out roaring. It's got to help their confidence. As far as Boston College is concerned, they're saying to themselves, hey, we were down 14-0 last year. It's no big deal. We can do it again. Bloody so far in two series, only two for four for 13 yards. And that's the big key that we pointed out earlier. Igwe Buike is set to kick off once again. Your combination of Tyrone Taylor and Kevin Bell, deep to receive. Had 13 field goals last year. And it was his field goal that tied that Boston College game with something like four minutes remaining for the 17-17 final. Another one. And this one hits the goal post. Unreturnable, two out of two. If you're wondering about Igwe Buike's range, he kicked that ball from the 40-yard line and it hit the top of the right upright as it was heading for the stand. So this guy, we might get an opportunity to see this guy kick a 70 yarder before the season is over. Let's see if Boston College can get it together. There's the all time career passing leader for Boston College. He surpassed the career mark in his first ball game of the year. Rolling out, cutting inside, gets to the 29, to the 30-yard line where he's met by Eldridge Milton. Milton with six tackles last week. 
was called upon in a very crucial situation right there. Flutie limping a bit there. That was vintage Doug Flutie as he was rolling a naked reverse around the end. And I gave James Robinson a little bit of a preview of what he can do as he stopped dead on a dime and cut inside of him. Second down a yard. Bradford. He's met head on by Terrence Mack. James Robinson also helping out on the play. But it's enough for the first down. Boston College at the 34-yard line. Terrence Mack is an interesting player. He's a freshman playing that bandit defensive end for Clemson. It's kind of an odd position. We'll talk about it later. He was a quarterback in high school, redshirted last year. This is his first year. Brown now in advantage. As Moody drops straight back, Curry gets the heat on him, but he dumps it off to Stratford. Stratford battling his way. Gets a gain of only a yard on the play. James Robinson making the tackle. So he moves the ball just to the 35-yard line. Stratford now with five carries, 18 yards on the day. Down on the field. That was Troy Stratford. He's, uh, he's all right. Just shaking up a little bit. He'll be back in the game. It seems as though they have to get Doug Flutie more involved in the offense. They're running the ball a little more than most thought they would. And it seems like they should use more plays that are designed for him and break up that Clemson defense a little bit. Make them think. Gerald Freeland to the near side. McKenzie to the far side now on a second and nine. The fullback also with the pattern over the middle. Stratford. He catches the ball at 40 and falls to the 39. Billy Davis to make the tackle after a very fine connection. Let's take a look at the secondary drop. Watch the two players to the top of your screen. This is a straight zone. Watch the receiver. As he comes down, he'll split the zone, and the safety does not get over fast. And a great pass by Flutie. He's there for the tackle, but not to break it up. Flutie, 15 of 27 for 227 yards in their last ball game. As Boston College moving into Clemson territory for the first time. Once again, he's got an avenue to throw up the middle, but he comes to the fullback. Visek, he moves inside the 35 to the 33. Troy Brown, the tackle. Clemson's got to be saying, what do we do with this guy? Here, we get pressure on him. Quick feet. He looks immediately to the outlet man who's wide open and eight yards. That can go on all day. If you put pressure on the quarterback, you're going to leave one of these safety valves open, and Flutie can find him. Arrington out. Mack comes in at the bandit spot. Second down and four for Boston College. Ball placement officially at the 32. Flutie now is four for six for 50 yards. Tucks it under, goes up the middle, and can't get out of the grasp. Very nice tackle by Milton. Eldridge Milton from Boston, Georgia. 6'3", 220-pound sophomore. Already with a letter. And he's gunning for his second letter in two years. Well, we spoke about getting Flutie more involved in the offense. That was not a broken play. That's a play specifically designed for the quarterback. And the reason for that, he takes two steps back, hoping that the middle of the defense will drop into pass coverage and give him some running room. And before the day is out, we're going to see this kid loose in the secondary, and he can really scoop. Robinson in for Berlin up front. Flutie hands off to his tailback. He's got the opening. Kevin Bell. Bell makes it inside the 15-yard line where he's met by Billy Davis. All right, make the defense think. That's what they're doing here. Maybe thinking pass, a big hole on the left side, and anybody can run through a hole like that. And Boston College does for a big gain and a first down. The veteran crew of receivers come into the ball game now. Flutie's favorite target, Brian Brennan, into the contest as a first and ten with 3.59 remaining here for the first quarter. The ball at the 14-yard line. Here comes Perry. There goes Flutie. Good defensive coverage that time. Terrence Mack in that bandit spot had the inside edge on the uh, defensive coverage. Well, if, if you're going to do anything to Flutie, you want to force him first 
to his left. He's a right-handed thrower, and also to the short side of the field. The ball's on the left hash. You want to make him come left to the sideline. He ran out of room is what happened. He didn't have any place to run. The sideline is like another defensive player, and Brennan was also on the short side of the field, couldn't get loose. We have an incompletion. Second and 10, Stratford back in at the running back spot, along with Besick, the fullback. The fake to Stratford. Flutie goes for Besick over, shoots him, had him wide open, but the tremendous rush that time by Jimmy Scott. Wells was also in there, but Scott had his hands up high, and it gave Flutie nowhere to go, and it's, it's so tough to throw over someone who's 6'4", 250. Well, again, they did the same thing. They forced him to the short side of the field, away from his arm. He had to, and he is 5'9", right, exactly as you said. All right, he's going the wrong way, had to throw up over somebody, and what he did was overthrow the receiver. McKenzie to the near side, and it's Brennan. Split wide to the far side. Gieselman is your tight end on a third and 10. Moody looking, and he hits his, uh, Brennan, his favorite target at the seven-yard line. The ball ruled dead there at the seven. They might count it to the six-yard line. Let's take a look at this. Brennan is the type of kid that'll catch the ball in the crowd. Watch him. Right over the middle, and he's a hair's breadth. Stays on his feet from making this a touchdown. A good read by Flutie, a great pattern by Brennan, and pretty good defense by Clemson. That's Jeff football, Suttle folks. with his fourth tackle of the year, making the stop short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and three yards to go for the first down. Kevin Snow into the lineup, their place kicker, five foot eight junior. He hit one field goal in their opening game of the season. It was a 31-yarder. Accurate kicker, five for five in the extra point department. Flutie so far is six for 10 for 54 yards. The kick is up. And the kick is good. Boston College on the scoreboard. With 2.51 remaining in the first quarter still. The score, Clemson 10, the Eagles of Boston College 3. We will be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. Ball uh, did a lot of different things, mostly in the air to set up the run, and it produced three points. Snow is ready to kick off. Comes to Stacy Driver's side. One yard deep, bobbles the ball, and he will not bring it out. Oh, he came close. That's one of those plays where <laughs> you can't breathe after, after you do it. When you look down and you're still behind the line, it's time for a prayer. Uh, Stacy didn't know what he wanted to do, and kickoff is not the time for indecision. Well, Stacy Driver, with a very fine first series of plays, he carried the ball for. 24 yards in four carries. He was averaging 5.3 after the first game of the season. And uh, now we've got Flagler in at the tailback spot. Kevin Mack is your fullback. Epley, hands on the reverse move. Terrence Rulak. The end around, and we've got an injury down on the field. It's David Clayton, your right tackle. Is having looked like uh, some ankle problems on the field, and timeout is called. That was a wing back reverse. Uh, they had a wing or a tight slot actually on the strong side, and uh, they ran the ball, faked the ball to Flagler. What they probably picked up is that Boston College is keying on their tailback. They let the linebackers take a step that way, hand back to the slot back, and there was some running room there. Although Boston College contained men, Missouri was simply outrun. David Clayton, a promising young sophomore from Lyman, South Carolina. He's 6'4", 270 pounds. He's being attended to right now with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining here in the first period. Clemson leading the ball game 10 to 3. The winningest football team in America, college football-wise, over the last three years. 22-1-1 one one since that 81 championship season and 10 consecutive wins. And as Kevin pointed out earlier, last team to keep Clemson from victory was this Boston College team with a 17-17 tie at Death Valley. Interesting to note also, Boston College had not been in a bowl game for 40 years. This is Danny Ford who turned around the Clemson program in pretty short order, and uh, he's the pride of South Carolina right now. Uh, Boston College had not been in a bowl game for 40 years until last year against Auburn in the Tangerine Bowl. Who was the last team that they played in a bowl? Well, it was Clemson. In 1943, losing to Clemson 6-3 to in a bowl game. I don't know if uh, 
they were still holding a grudge, but that's an interesting piece of, uh, of information. Uh, their at first least, uh, game was the Cotton <laughs> Bowl. Their first game between each other in 1940. A 6-3 Clemson victory. Okay, second and five for the Tigers. Mack. He's broken some tackles today. You just cannot arm tackle that man. He makes it to the 31-yard line where he's met Pereira, Dave Pereira, a 5'10 junior. The way the Clemson offense, we have another injury to Boston College. You can't quite see the number of the player. Uh, it looks like Von Nessen, who they regard as one of their finest defensive linebackers, nine tackles in their opening game of the season. A two-year letterman from North Babylon, New York. And it looks like he's all right, uh, off under his own power. And at 52 alignment, those inside linebackers are key, and you don't like to see a kid come off the field, especially if you're a defensive coach who means so much to your defense. We hope by nothing's all right and he'll be back. Rulak to the near side. Charleston to the far side now as the pitch goes back to Flagler. Penalty flag down. Herrera once again to make the stop, but I think they'll bring it back. Tackle by Dave Herrera. Offsides. No, it's on Boston. Boston College offside. They're getting a little bit anxious. Uh, Clemson again doing just about as they please offensively. Uh, key to this game, you can't let the fullback in Clemson's offense run for big yardage. Mack had 34 yards last week total against Western Carolina. He breaks one for over 40 yards against Boston College. That's got to throw the defensive coaching staff of the Eagles into a tizzy. Because this guy is not supposed to gain big yardage. When he starts running 40 yards, you've got a lot of problems. So it's a first and five now for Clemson after the offsides penalty is marched off. Williams and Boyer, your outside receivers. And they both come to the near side. KD Dunn, the tight end of the far side. Out of the eye formation. Epley still a quarterback. That's Flagler. Good speed. That's your tight end Dunn on the block. And Flagler makes it to the 30-yard line. Watch Kevin Mack on this play. Watch, watch the fullback on this play. Now talk about keys. Watch where Kevin Mack goes. He's the man in front of 33. He goes to the right. Flagler cuts back across the grain. That's the way the play is designed. Everybody's gone with the fullback. And this guy on the loose in the secondary will not make you smile if you're wearing a burgundy shirt. James Farr picking off the linebacker who had to adjust to going to the wrong way that time. Done with the block. Tony Thurman made the stop finally. First and 10 Clemson now at the 29-yard line. No room up the middle that time. Mack tried, and Hemmer, Andy Hemmer, was right there to make the tackle from his right linebacker spot. He's from Cincinnati, Ohio, a freshman. Remember we said the strength of the Boston College defense, their best defensive player, 17 hits last year against Clemson, is Diossi, and they're running right at the middle of that defense. A gain of the yard on the play, second and nine at the 28-yard line. The Tigers on the move once again. Epley looks. Finds his man. It's done. K.D. Dunn from Decatur, Georgia, and he's picked off by Pereira. A gain of about seven yards on the play. This is, what, with a nice block this is what Flutie had trouble doing. Epley's left-handed, rolling away from his arm. Watch Boston College string him out. But they're not giving him any pressure, so he has time to throw. He's able to throw back. See that? It almost looks distorted, but he makes the throw. It's on target, and Clemson on the move. Ball down to the 21-yard line. It is third and three to go for Clemson. They're going to let the clock roll out here to end the first quarter. Two seconds, one second. There's the whistle, ending the first quarter of play. With the score, Clemson 10, Boston College 3. We'll pause now for a word from your local station. This is the Clemson in the rushing department, 11 carries for 111 yards, Kevin. Tigers, my name, running's my game, always has been, at least the last two years. And remember, two years ago, they won a national championship running the ball 77% of the time. Art Eklund and Kevin Kiley from Boston College. Clemson leading it 10 to 3. Braxton Williams in at fullback, but the pitch goes back to Flagler. Hit that time. Let's watch the strength of the Eagle defense now. This is what they're supposed to do. This, this play takes a while to develop, and Boston College is there. Three of them there, actually. The initial hit that time was by Bob Feastick. 
Dave Pereira. And we're going for the field goal. Ball placement at the 28-yard line, and it's up. And it is good. So Clemson now, with Bob Pauling, gets three more points on the board. You know, there were three ch charter jets that came up from Clemson this morning, plus numerous people who drove up and flew up on their own. I would have to estimate, looking at this Clemson orange shirt crowd, that there must be somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 Clemson Tiger fans here in Boston tonight. Either that art or orange is a, definitely a very popular color in Boston. Not only that, the Clemson band is here, and they're making a ruckus over in the corner. Clemson fans love their football, and watching them, you can understand why. Very exciting, very tough football team. Taylor and Bell will go back to receive the kickoff. Igwe Buike trying for his third straight kickoff that might be unreturnable. The first two, no chance, went through the end zone. One went over the end zone, the other one hit the goal post. Bell to the near side and Taylor to the far side. Just into the second quarter of play. Igwe Buike. Will they bring it out? Yes, Kevin Bell. No, he goes back just before crossing the line. Last year against Clemson, Flutie had a terrific game in that comeback effort. They found themselves down 14 to nothing at halftime. 18 of 35 for 242 yards and a 17-yard touchdown pass. And once again, trailing by 10 points here in the first half, they're calling on Flutie to bring them back. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Flutie dumps it off to his fullback. Beastick. Beastick is surrounded at the 27-yard line by Walls and James Robinson. Nice gain on the play. In that first quarter now, Boston College in seven rushes, got only 43 yards. They had 53 through the air, connecting on six out of 10 attempts. The pass to the fullback, a gain of seven, second and three. McKenzie in motion, comes to the near side and sets up. We've got Brendan to the far side, and the tight end is shifting over. That's Brendan Murphy. All that motion, and it goes to the tailback, who gets the first down over the 30-yard line. Robinson and Walls making the stop on Kevin Bell. Boston College, not a running team, but they do run well. I, mean, I don't want to give the impression that they don't run the ball well. They use the pass because of Flutie, because he's the strength of the offense, to set up the run. But this is a well-balanced team. If they need two yards, you better believe they can go out and get it. Run into the near side this time with McKenzie split to the far side and a first and ten. Ball placement at the 32-yard line. Linebackers jittering back and forth. We've got Walls on the run, and he ran right by the ball carrier, but he fumbles, and it's recovered by Boston College at the 40-yard line, make it the 39. Lucky break that time for the Eagles. Good hit here. Watch the hit. He'll break the line of scrimmage, but this is just good defense. They teach you if the guy's running, you make sure you get a good shot at him. Now, here he's a little bit disoriented, and right there, boom, he gets hit with the beef. That was and subtle. drops the ball. Subtle tried the ball loose, and Davis just couldn't get to it before it was recovered by Boston College. Second and three. So they made yardage about every way you possibly can. On this drive anyway, Flutie back to pass. He's got his man deep on the right side. He goes over the middle instead. It's intercepted and dropped. Billy Davis. Oh, a man is jumping up and down on the near side. Billy Davis playing center field here. This man is open. Flutie threw the ball a little bit late. If he hits this guy a little earlier, he's got big yardage. Watch him. He's open underneath, but Davis playing center field just gets their ball overthrown just a tad. I think if it was thrown on the money, Davis might have made the hit. You can't see that Gerald Phelan, the flanker on the near side, had touchdown written all over it, the 40-yard line, and no one was within 10 yards of him. So Flutie, on the incompleted pass, now has a third and four. Goes to the tight end. Complete first down. Boston College at the 50-yard line. Walls and Davis finally making the stop. Guy 
Gieselman. Scott Gieselman, he's a big guy, 6'5", 233 pounds, a junior. We talked at the opening of the show about Clemson, tongue in cheek, having weaknesses on defense, but Flutie is, I think he's, uh, he's getting an advantage a little bit on the underneath part of the zone, underneath the linebackers. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's watch the underneath here for a while and see if that, in fact, is where he's going. First and 10, right at the 50-yard line. The quick out. And he connects a gain of seven yards on the play. That's Brennan. Defense has been on the field a long time for Clemson here in the second quarter. If he gets this ball up a little bit, Brennan has some yardage. Look at the defensive back, how far he's playing off. Now, Brennan has to read that. That changes the pattern. He goes immediately out. If he could stay on his feet, he could pick up some yardage, but Flutie dropped it a little bit low. Okay, the tight end is out of the ball game now. They're going to tackle eligible, though. They pitch back to Stratford, Troy Stratford. And Stratford is met by Perry and Roy Brown. Roy from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Boston College has four first round downs by rushing, two by passing. Clemson, six first downs of the first half. Boston College, six first downs. Clemson, four first downs, by correction. But Clemson leads it 13 to three. Still 11 minutes, two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Stratford in the open. Puts back against three Clemson Tigers and gets down to the 25. Roy Brown and Jeff Wells to make the tackle. Key to the Clemson defense is Perry. He's the nose guard. Let's see what happens to him on this play. Boston, Boston College is going to seal him off, double team him. Perry at the top of your screen can't see him, but he's pushed out of the way, and that creates a big hole on the outside. No pursuit for Clemson, and that's what will happen. Devane is now back in at the nose guard. James Robinson is just to the right of your center there. First and 10 at the 25, Boston College. Moody dropping straight back, takes time. He goes to the man that he didn't see, Phelan, and overshoots him. A nice one-on-one -on -one coverage by Tyrone Davis. Well, there was some room to complete that pass. Uh, Flutie had what we call, in football terminology, nervous feet on that one. His feet were going a mile a minute, even as he threw the ball, and you have to set. And one of the problems for a guy who runs around the way Flutie does, there he is, He's a great quarterback, has a great arm, but you have to be standing on the ground when you throw the ball. Very difficult if you're levitating in the air, as he was. Brian Brennan coming back to the huddle say, hey, why not me? I was all in the open on the far side of the field. Flutie's not seeing all his receivers right now. It's Brennan to the near side on a second and 10 of the 25. The draw play, and it's stuffed out beautifully. Ray Brown, the initial hit, then William Devane coming in on top. a look at Walls, the freshman linebacker. You never know these kids were freshmen. <laughs> Playing a whale of a game, and that's the strength of the Clemson defense. Uh, if you're gonna, it doesn't matter if you delay or if you run right at him. If you gain yardage through the middle of that defense, you're doing a job, and they didn't. Jim Brown, the play. ball carrier on the last play, had two carries in the first game of the season, averaging 10.5 a carry. That time, he went nowhere. Third and 13. Crucial down now for the Tigers. Nine minutes and 45 seconds out of the shotgun. Devane on the rush. Good coverage that time by Tyrone Davis. That's pass interference, and there's no call on that. Let's watch this. This is single coverage. Single coverage, and he beats the man. Now watch him here. Tyrone number 37. Watch McKenzie now. He's got him on the post. Watch the bump. There's a bump right there, just before the ball gets there. No call, and that's tough for BC because that would have been a first down close in. Good pattern. The pass was there, and pretty good defense, although maybe a little close. Kevin Snow, the ball placement at the 35-yard line. The kick is up. It looks like it might just barely be long enough. No, it's to the left. Off to the left. No good. So the score remains with nine minutes and 31 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. 13 to three. Clemson over Boston College. We'll be back after these messages. First and 10 Tigers as they take over the action at the 28 yard line, their own 28. Boston College has had some opportunities here. The Eagles have moved the ball. New quarterback, Anthony Peretti. 
number 17 from Jacksonville Florida Freddie in the first game of the season going four out of ten through the air for 47 yards his longest pass play for Peretti was 25 naked reverse but he's got some people over there and he's got back at the 25 a loss of two yards David Thomas from the left end spot he's only 5'11 but he's 228 a senior with lots of experience and the capital of Heights Maryland lad nails Peretti the new quarterback Danny Ford well, you have to wonder, Danny Ford has a lot of confidence in these quarterbacks, and uh, Peretti is not quite the athlete that Epley is. He goes and he goes with his second-team quarterback to score, uh, you know, 13 to 3, nine minutes to go. That's an interesting move by Ford. It says a lot for Peretti. Boyer to the far side. As Peretti, out of the eye, drops straight back. He's going to have some pressure, gets it away. Is that a lateral? He better get on it. No one got on it in time. Out of bounds. But the ball will be marked back there. It sure was a lateral. Flagler did not go after the ball. You know, it's almost a break that he didn't go after the ball. Otherwise, Boston College would have known. And Look at Peretti. Now, Peretti, that's not a good pass. He, he's feeling footprints, I think, back there. And it kind of hesitated before he threw the pass. Very ill-conceived. And Flagler has got to be parallel or in front of Peretti when he throws that ball. And that's actually the offensive back's fault. A rushing comparison. Boston College out of 12 attempts, 68 yards. Clemson, 12 attempts, 111 yards. But they're deep in their own territory now with a third and 33. 8.42 remaining second quarter. Flagler. That great speed, but he has nowhere to go. Well, that's a wise move by Danny Ford, and the Tigers are leading in the game. Third and 33. Your odds are not with you to get a first down. Give it to Flagler. Now, you know, they say Flagler has a tendency to fumble. I think that shows a lot for the offensive coach. The Fisher the they and Diossi the making the tackle. And the Hatcher now standing in his own end zone. Gets a beautiful high putt away. Fair catch is called for, and it's taken by Brian Brennan. So Boston College will take over inside Clemson territory at the 48-yard line, trailing by the score of 13 to 3. With the score, Clemson 13. Still eight minutes and five seconds remaining in the uh, second quarter. That punt traveled 38 yards. Beautiful hang time and good coverage. It's the best field position of the day for Boston College. And with Flutie at quarterback, 48 yards is not a great distance to travel. There's the stats from last week, 227 yards. 48 is just a fraction of that. He passed for three touchdowns and ran for another one last week against Morgan State. Giesel on your tight end to the near side. The fullback is blocking on the play, and here comes the student body. Perry! Along with the linebacker on the move, Henry Walls, this, and they just... This is pressure. Look at Perry carrying people as he goes. Flutie. Uh, I would have liked to have been inside Flutie's head on that play. He was wondering what this was coming at him. Uh, Perry carrying his lineman along with him. Bardwell along with Stratford. Bardwell's a left guard. Stratford, they were just bowled over. Second and 17 now for Boston College. The ball placement at the 45. Flutie looks. He's got his man. That's Brennan. Brennan cuts in. 40-yard line. He's stopped. Shy of the first down. He'll be three yards or four yards shy when Henry Walls got a good hit on it. Let's watch Brennan. A square in, plays actually off the defender, makes the tough catch inside, and then steps inside for more yardage. Brennan's not all that quick, but he's got a nose for yardage. He knows, turn it upfield and get those yards. Walls calling the defensive signals. It's Perry at nose guard. Watson Davis. Pleasant shoulders the backfield defensively as Flutie goes back on a third and two. The handoff due today. I don't they did not get the first down as he sprawled over the 40-yard line when Henry Walls hit him there. Very close. It'll be shy, I believe. Very Kevin close. Bell, the ball carrier. It's around the 40-yard line, Art, and uh, I don't know if they're gonna go for it. I think they have to go to the 38 to get that first down, and it's placement on the 39-yard line, fourth and one. Of course, the Eagle fans want them to go for it, and it looks like they will. Flutie is 10 out of 17 through the air for 93 yards. James Robinson is your leading tackler in this ball game with four tackles. Fumble on the play, Flutie. 
Let it go again, and I think Clemson recovers at the 40-yard line. Flutie tried to let go of that ball once again when he should have eaten it. Well, he tried to get out of there a little bit too fast, and it's interesting what he did. A lot of people would think this is a bad play. Watch Flutie. Drops the ball. He knows at this point, I think, that it's Clemson's ball anyway. So he may be trying to shovel it to one of his players because even if Clemson picks it up, it's still Clemson's ball, whether he, whether they get it or not. Three-year letterman Jim Scott recovers the football. The 6'4", 250-pound senior Darner took the air out of the ball. 13 to 3. Epley back in at quarterback now. Clemson leading by that margin. 6-17 uh, remaining second quarter. Dixon motion to the near side. That's Flagler. Correction, Williams. Braxton Williams in at the fullback spot. Same type of play. A little misdirection. Cut back across the grain. Clemson. Clemson's getting, uh, getting full on those. Boston College, two turnovers in this game. Clemson has yet to turn the ball over, and that, of course, is always the key in any football game. So Braxton Williams gets a gain of eight yards on the play, second and two. Ball at the 47-yard line. Stacy Driver in motion, but the counterplay goes to Williams once again, and he easily gets the first down, moving to the 45, just outside the Boston 45-yard line. You wonder how a team can run, 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 and still gain yards. You would think if the defense knows what they're going to do, you can stop them. Not all that easy, especially against a program like Clemson. They've got good quality people. They know what they're doing, and they can literally ram it down your throat. Here's the first and ten play. Penalty flag down. Driver tried the right guard spot, met by a solid wall. Mike Ruth, who had such a great ball game in the first game of the year for Boston College, 11 tackles, made the stop this time. And we've got a holding violation against the Tigers. You know, this has been a relatively soft game for the officials. This is only the third penalty of the ball game, if I recollect correctly. Well, we covered the game last week, and it was the same story. Not a whole lot of penalties for Clemson. And that's a tribute to the coaching. These kids don't have to hold. They don't have to do these type of things to move the ball. And Clemson because they are a quality program, generally don't get any patents this year. Ball resting on the 47-yard line. It'll be first and 18 now for the Tigers after the holding infraction. Driver pounces on the football back at the 40. All right, here's how you play the option. Watch number 95 for Boston College. Make this guy pitch the ball. That's his job, and he did, and he didn't get the pitch to Driver. Driver makes a nice play coming back to pick it up, but if you want to get a team to stop running the option, do that to him. That's excellent defense by Chuck Gorecki, number 95 for the Eagles. Second down. 25 yards to go for the first down. We've only had three penalties. I was correct. 15 yards assessed against Clemson. Five against Boston College. Epley's going deep. Intercepted. 17-yard line. Tony Thurman playing alley very well as the ball hung up a little too long. Kevin. This play, this play has interception all over it, all the way. Alley is not that fast. It's double coverage short. The short man pushes him. Alley looks like he's free, but there's a safety standing there all the way, number 17. And he simply had his eye on the ball from the time it left Epley's hand. It's Boston College first. So now, Boston College, though, with not very good field position inside their 20. Mark the ball at the 17-yard line, first and 10. The Eagles trailing by 10. Stratford fumbled, and what a break for Clemson. The ball came popping out of his hands. And McSwain makes the recovery. Rod McSwain, last year an offensive player. And last year he scored a touchdown against this Boston College team. Oh, the Tigers happy. Well, Stratford just dropped that ball. He wasn't hit. He, he seemed like he was trying to switch hands and lost the handle on it. Not a good place to do it. I guess that's an understatement on your own 25-yard line. Boston College, three turnovers now. Clemson playing a little bit better than that on offense. Driver at tailback. We've got Braxton Williams at the fullback spot. Alley is playing up tight near the tight end. It goes to Williams. Braxton digging his way to the 15 and finally over the 15-yard line. He was trying to drive through Tony Thurman. You know, I always hated this type of a runner that's 
type like Braxton. Well, you linebackers would. Boy, when this guy breaks the line of scrimmage, <laughs> I hated to be standing there. I didn't mind dragging him down from behind, but I didn't want to get in front of a guy, especially fullbacks. When they when they get in the open field, they just love it because it doesn't happen that often. 6'2", 220-pound senior with driving legs from Greensboro, North Carolina, Braxton Williams. Second down, one yard to go for the first down. They have to get over that 15-yard line for the first down. Stacy Driver. He's got it, and he loses the football. Picked up, look out, and a nice move by Epley. Epley might have saved the day there. That's Diossi with the fumble recovery. That is a guy. This guy had two fumble recoveries and an interception last week. He just is around the ball. The great linebackers always are. Watch Driver drop the ball. Here's Diossi, number 99, on the left of your screen. He's like a vulture. He's waiting for it to happen, picks it up on a bounce. And he says, if I wasn't so big, 240 pounds, I'd have had a touchdown. When you intercepted that ball, didn't you like to see the quarterback come after you? <laughs> but Epley, an outstanding, outstanding athlete. First to 10, Boston College at their own 15-yard line. Out of the eye, they go to the fullback, and lots of running room. Bistick takes the ball to the 34-yard line. Billy Davis making the stop. Clemson rushing has 117 yards and 14 carries, and now Boston College with a big hole. Big, big turnover by Clemson. They had the edge three to one. It's now three to two, and you can see how much it means. They get a turnover, and they come, and they run that little trap play. Now they've got field position, 34-yard line. Okay. And off to Stratford. I don't think you can count on him dropping the ball again, and he makes it to the 38-yard line. A gain of four yards on the play. When you have a defense like Clemson's, you have to trick them. This is a counter play. Here Milton comes the tailback, little misdirection, diving tackle miss there, and running room. You don't run right at Clemson. There's too much beef up there. The Bruise brothers, you got the refrigerator, Perry. You've got to make them think and trick them. They did it on that play. A 220 pound linebacker, Eldridge Milton, making the stop on that play. Second. And six yards to go for the first down for Boston College. Flutie over the center, hits that big tight end, Gieselman. And Tim Childers is right there to make the tackle. What a matchup you've got there with Childers 6-1, but Gieselman plays a very tall 6-5. Well, with Boston College there, they're running a wide slot here to the near side. Brennan is the leading receiver, so Clemson has got to be aware of Brennan. And what that does, it leaves the strong safety man-to-man -man on the tight end. Very tough assignment. Gieselman's an excellent tight end quality ball player. He makes the catch. Gerald Phelan is split to the near side. Marvin McKenzie to the far side. First and 10 at the 45. Moody has his tight end in the open, but he's going deep, and his man is in the open, but he overshoots him. It was McKenzie. That's McKenzie. Both of the guys, Brennan and McKenzie, were free way on top. They both had long passes. being open to do something about it in the second half. Clemson's going to have to tighten up. Flutie now 11 for 19, 99 yards through the air. But Boston has only scored three points in the ball game, and they've got one minute and 50 seconds to go, second and 10 before halftime. Flutie back. Overshoots the tight end, and on the coverage is Arrington. Vandal just couldn't hold on to the football. It was just a little bit underthrown for him but it overshot the big 6'5 233 pound junior Scott Gieselman. Well, you ask the question why is it so strange to have a quarterback there he is Flutie that's 5'9 he's 11 for 20 100 yards no interceptions today he does throw a lot of interceptions but he throws a lot of touchdowns too why is it so strange well because height is important if a defensive player holds up his hand the shorter quarterback has to throw it higher and a lot of times they'll overthrow receivers which causes interceptions no interception there but an overthrow Baylor to the near side McKenzie to the far side the tight end going out uh, as usual on the pattern and he gets the ball at the 44 yard line Richardson and Watson make the stop on Beastick they put everybody in the pattern. First down for Boston College. Who 
we'll be back with more Clemson football. One minute, 38 seconds before halftime. It'll be a first and 10 for Boston College. The ball resting on the 43-yard line. The Eagles are trailing by 10 points. Clemson 13 to 3. Flutie coming back to the huddle, number 22. Boston College has rushed in this ball game for 89 yards. This game is not unlike last year's game where uh, Clemson led 14 to nothing at the half. Boston College is able to move the ball, but Clemson's defense is so tough and such a big play defense, they can shut you down at any time. But again, it's two halves to every game. Brennan to the far side, Phelan in the slot. Flutie to pass on the first down. Phelan inside the 30 to the 27. Jeff Shettle making the tackle. If you, if you don't get to this kid, Flutie, he's going to hurt you. The middle of this Clemson defense has been open the entire half. All right. First and 10, 27 yard line. Flutie, a two minute offense. Avoids the rush up the middle and gets caught. Make it the 23 yard line. Edgar Pickett and Devane to make the tackle. Nowhere to go. He did not waste any time and no huddle going. Let's go back two plays here. Flutie dropping back. Middle of the defense open. He'll hit that short post pattern for a first down. Second and six. Down and out. He throws it out of bounds. Brennan running the down and out. So to stop the clock at one minute, seven seconds to go before halftime. I think it's interesting to note that Clemson, when they run the, the two wide receivers, when uh, B.C., runs the two wide receivers. Clemson is trying to go man on the backside, and that's leaving the middle of the Clemson pass defense open. Boston College has noticed that, believe me, and they're trying to exploit it. Those little short post patterns and straight flag routes by the tight end have been open. We've got Pelagate, number 49, at a tight end spot. Flutie back on a third and six. Close, but no cigar. Reggie Pleasant on the single coverage. And that was Brennan, the leading receiver, running a good pattern. That ball underthrown just a little bit. Good defense by Pleasant. Rod McSwain, number 28. By both of them. <laughs> and we've got the field goal kicker in once again, Kevin Snow. They'll be putting it down at the 30-yard line. Brennan, the wide receiver, moves the ball. Kick is up. It has an angle. It's off to the left again. That's the second time Snow has pulled the ball out of three tries. So Clemson, once again with a great break, takes over the football. Only 57 seconds remaining before halftime. What would you do with 57 seconds? You got a minute to go. You're leading by 10 points. Well, Clemson, again, is a running team, and they don't like to put all their eggs in the passing basket. Uh, if I'm Danny Ford and I'm sitting on my own, 23-yard line. You got to figure he's going to go to his running game, maybe his pullback. Flutie so far in the game now is 12 for 21 for 111. In the first down department, Boston College has 11 to Clemson's five. Epley back and throws it out of bounds. That shows you why I'm not a head coach. <laughs> Rulak was the pass receiver was intended for. Rulak was the ACC Rookie of the, year, of, the year, of the Week, hopefully the Rookie of the Year, but he was the Rookie of the Week last week. He caught two passes. Uh, 64 yards. 64 yards. Both yep. passes for touchdowns, a 39-yarder and a 25-yard touchdown reception. Second and 10. Not much time off the board now. Only 52 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Flagler, the ball carrier. Mike Ruth made an initial hit, number 68. There you see the time ticking away. It'll be third and 10 now for the Tigers. No gain on the last play. Well, that's a possible big play. They run that cutback uh, with the tailback, and they could pick up yardage on that. It's a good call. Rulak to the far side. And the pitch back to Flagler. Nice pullback block. He cuts inside, makes his way over the 30. Shy of the first down. The punting unit will have to come on. David Thomas making the stop. Thomas, a two-year senior letterman from Capitol Heights, Maryland. 
Boston College has called a timeout with nine seconds remaining. They want to get this one last play. A punt and a punt return, obviously, is a big offensive play. Brennan will go back at single safety. Maybe they'll try for the block, see if they can get in field goal range, but they definitely have an opportunity here, and they don't want to slip away. Dale Hatcher, who came into this game averaging 45 yards a punt and who has punted very well in this contest, will be standing back at his own 15. There you see Brennan, the receiver. He's on the 25. So Clemson starting off hot, losing momentum toward the end of the second quarter. Beautiful punt by Hatcher. Brennan makes the fair catch at the 34-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will take over with the first down. One second on the clock, so one play all the way is what they'll try for. Are you going to ask me what I would do in this situation? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the fullback again. I think you put three receivers on one side and then try to volleyball it. <laughs> okay. It worked for the Falcons a couple of times against the Saints, but it hasn't worked for too many teams. The wide receivers are split. And they just put it up the middle. That'll be the last play of the first half. Edgar Pickett, Henry Walls making the stop. <laughs> and there's the uh, whistle that ends the first half of action with Clemson leading Boston College for the score of 13 to 3. It's halftime with Clemson 13, Boston College 3. And we'll be back with halftime after these words from your local stations. First of all, in the first down department, there you see BC with 11, Clemson 5. Clemson has outrushed Boston College 113 to 101 with similar amounts of carries. But look at the passing department. Boston College with 128 through the air, while Clemson is a minus 7. So total yards, you have Boston College with 229 yards compared with Clemson's 120. Turnovers, as Kevin said, big factor. Three for Boston College, two for Clemson. Time of possession, Boston College, more than 18 minutes, Kevin. Well, you can expect that from Boston College. Thirteen minutes, 37 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Clemson's first possession, Flagler at tailback, veers to the outside, bounced out of bounds at the 40-yard line. These plays running the eye back are designed to go wherever Flagler wants to take him. If he wants to run that ball inside, he can. Or if he wants to slide outside, as he did, he can do that, too. He picked up a couple of yards. Dave Pereira in to make the stop, number 41 from the strong safety spot. He had seven tackles in his first game of the year. It's second and five for Clemson now. Ball at the 38-yard line. To Kevin Mack, he's the leading rusher in the ball game. 53 yards on four carries before he packed the ball that time. Gaffney and Pereira making the stop. First down, Clemson. This is a wing right formation, and the wing is an extra blocker. He kicks the man out. Mack has room inside the wing, outside the tight end for a good game. Mack's having a big game. Well, I tell you, Pereira paid the price on that tackle. Came down low right at the knees. First and ten at the 47. handoff and Gaffney made the hit Mac uh, tough running up front Boston College defense is supposed to be strong up the middle they've showed flashes of it but Clemson is a lot stronger offensively than people think they are and they've been able to do the Boston College pretty much what they want on the ground Williams to the far side it's Boyer to the near side flag uses your tailback and Mac at fullback gets the four-man front second and seven for the Tigers Mac off tackle this time, and he's a two yards short of the first down, making his way to the 45 of Boston College. Gaffney once again to make the stop. Gaffney's from Wayne, New Jersey, 6'2", 225, a sophomore, in place of their awesome tackler, Diossi. Diossi not in the ball game right now. Third, make it three yards to go for the first down. The ball at the 46-yard line. Flagler 
Got enough for the first down as he gets almost to the 40-yard line. He got it by a yard where Greg Santo made the stop. The senior out of Kingston, Pennsylvania, making the tackle, but not before Clemson gets the first down at the 41-yard line. Mack, six carries for 65 yards. Driver, eight carries for 17 yards. Those are the leading rushers for Clemson, and there's the first down total right now. Boston College, 11, but Clemson on the move. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Into the third quarter, on the reverse. And around, that's Rolak. And Rolak is met after a two-yard game. That's a tight slot for Rulak. Just a freshman. Watch Rulak in the top of your screen. He's a tight slot here. They're going to fake to the middle. They've been having luck with Mac. They hand off here on the reverse, and Rulak gets the end. Says, well, wait a second. Is that supposed to be anybody here but white shirts? Unfortunately, there's a few of the other color, and down he goes. Steve LaBusher and Tony Thurman making the tackle for Boston College. It's a second and seven situation now. Ball at the 38. Epley back to pass. Threw it right over to Mac and covering Mac like a blanket was Harrington, Scott Harrington. He's only 256 pounds. Good matchup there. Well, a lot of you think this is interference, but the ball, the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage, right? And I'll tell you, this is great defense. Everybody downfield is covered, and that's not all. This guy's covered too. And if he comes on the other side of Mac, got an interception for a touchdown. Great defense by Boston College all over the field. Okay, big play now for Clemson, third and seven. Rulak is split to the far side, looking long. Epley throws it out of bounds, and it looked like Dunn wanted a call. Dunn wanted a call on Lubisher, the right end number 93, who was covering the uh, fullback or the tight end all the way. Again, Boston College playing excellent defense. The Eagles are a pretty good defensive team. Remember, they gave up 17 points on the average last year, and that includes 52 points to Penn State. So they can hold the defense, hold the offense down. Big boy Brique in to try the field goal. The ball placement at the 45-yard line. He made a 43-yarder last year, missed the 43-yarder for the win in eight seconds remaining. It's up, it's got distance. It is good. Big boy Brique. What an amazing field goal with 11 minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. With the score, Clemson 16, Boston College 3. We pause now for a word from your local station. This is the rate five yard field goal by Igwoy Buike. Boy, he's got power in that leg. Just a chip shot for him. I tell you, I was watching him kick 65 yarders before the game. True, there's nobody coming at you, but he's got the leg. Tyrone Taylor to the far side, and it's Kevin Bell to the near side to await the kickoff. And once again, Donald will try to boot it out of the end zone. Bionic leg. This guy can kick, and I bet you he gets drafted by the pros. Little trouble on the short ones, a little inconsistent, but he can work on that. Nine plays in that drive that led to the 55-yard field goal. We've got a bullet this time. It's taken by Bell. Bell from the five. Nice move at the 25-yard line. And he's down, taken down by Richard Donaldson. For those, for those of you that think you just run down and make a tackle on the special teams, that's not right. Watch Clemson come down the field on this. You have to stay in your lane. You see the way they're lined up? You have to keep that distance between players, and I'll show you why. If these guys all converge on the ball, this man goes for a touchdown, but they stay outside. Right here, he cuts outside. He has some room. But look at Clemson's leverage. They're all staying in their lane, and they make the tackle. First and two at the 32. Stafford. Broke the tackle at the 35. 40. Up almost to the 45. Make it the 44-yard line. Stratford on the carry, and Williams on the stop. Great individual effort here. There is a block at the corner. Right there. See it? But once he gets into the secondary, it's all him. Three men there miss him. He'll cut back, gets out of the grasp of another, and finally down. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Brenner, the game's leading receiver with four catches for 36 yards to the far side. He got held up, but the ball is going toward Fanglin. Almost intercepted on a nice try at the 44. Reggie Pleasant going for the ball. 
along with uh, Ronald Watson. There's a drill they call the tip drill for defensive players. You just saw it there. Only Usually only one guy gets to tip it. Three. Three were in on it for Clemson. And, and folks, that's athletic ability. If you can react that fast to a tip ball, you're doing something. Second and ten with the incompletion. All-American candidate Doug Flutie at quarterback. Swings it out. Good coverage on the play. Brown and Perry in to smother Brennan. You may remember last week, those of you that saw the Clemson game last week, a fellow named Willie Perkins came in late in the game for Western Carolina, had great success with a similar pattern. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised that uh, Jack McNell saw that on film and decided to try it. Phelan in the slot to the far side. Brennan is your split receiver. Giesel with the tight end on the near side on a third and eight crucial down. Stratford, your running back, along with Jimmy Brown. Mixing up the coverages, and the Flutie took too much time. Lots of movement on that defense over there to try to confuse the quarterback. And they did just that. Illegal procedure, too much time on Flutie. That's the first time I believe that's happened today. And uh, Clancy can do that to you. The Bandit. Now, we talked about the Bandit at the head of the show. The Bandit is a roving defensive end. And I'll tell you, when he starts moving around defensively, he can give the quarterback fits. What do I do? Is he a strong safety? Is he an end? Is he coming? Is he staying back? You saw the result right there. Flutie has to look around, make the call. He didn't do it enough time. Jack McNell over the ball at center now. You see, that was a crucial play. Now the strategy changes at third and 13. Flutie, the deep drop. Now comes inside. We might have a holding call as the ball is intercepted at the 40-yard line by Pleasant. Reggie Pleasant still on his feet to the 43-yard line. Let's check the penalty flag back deep at the 30-yard line. Terrific pressure by the Clemson defensive front. There's Perry. You see him head on, Kevin. Watch this job now that the center does on Perry. This guy's 320 pounds. Look at this. Look at the positioning on him. He gets him around the back. Flutie steps up just the way he's supposed to. Of course, he used his hands on that. And it's a penalty. Doesn't matter because it was intercepted anyway, but that's not a bad job. Here's a, here's a tip and an interception, and that's the old tip drill. Great reaction. So Another Pleasant, turnover. Pleasant gets the ball, but 9-07 remaining here in the second quarter. 16-3, Clemson with a first and 10. Flagler over the 45-yard line. Good five-yard gain on the play. That's how the defense is supposed to work. The contain holds up the running back, makes him cut inside, and the pursuit catches up with it. That's pretty good defense against a great running back. Make it a gain of uh, officially three yards on the play, so it'll be second and seven for Clemson now. Ray Williams comes to the near side. Boyer is to the far side, out of the eye. Epley on the down and out. Almost a great catch by Williams. ball thrown a little high. Epley has not been as crisp tonight as he was last week throwing the ball. It was 10 for 14, 140 yards in the time that he played against Western Carolina. But remember, Western Carolina is not Boston College, and their defensive secondary has done a pretty good job on uh, Mr. Epley. In fact, I believe they were minus yardage for the first half pass. Flagger with 43 yards rushing is your tailback. Third and seven. Here comes the student body, Epley. Nice move to get out of the pocket, and he throws it down. Well, that's a blitz by the big linebacker, Diossi, and that ooh you hear is ooh, is that grounding? I'm inclined to think it is, but it's a good play on Epley's part. There was a receiver in the, uh, in the area. It just looked pretty bad. Rulak was in the area, and into the ball game is Dale Hatcher for the punting shores. Rulak would have had to have long fingernails to catch that one. Hatcher's been punting beautifully. Oh, and he sends a high spiral. Phelan calls for the fair catch at the seven-yard line. So Gerald Phelan covers the football. And Clemson 
leading 16 to 3 with 8 minutes 16 seconds remaining here in the third, third quarter has to give up the football. Boston College getting tough defensively. They played very well. You know, Hatcher's an interesting story. He has a chance this year to become the only punter in Clemson history to average 40 yards a punt for three seasons. He's done it in the last two years, and this is the third season. McKenzie to the far side, Brennan to the near side. And the Clemson defense hold Boston College deep. Hand off to Bell, and he hits the far side where he meets Henry Walls and Devane, William Devane. Field position is extremely important for Boston College. They are a passing team. They won all the stats in the first half. They had more first downs, more time possession, more passing yardage, but they don't have any points. I think they need to get Flutie more involved in the game on foot. He's got to roam around a little bit more. Game of three. Ball at the 10. Breaking loose. Out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Henry Walls finally caught up with Stratford. Big play for Boston College here, getting the man loose and getting a first down deep in their own territory. As they said, Field position extremely important. Flutie has to have a lot of field to work with. He's that type of quarterback. Being short, he's got to be able to go sideline to sideline in order to find an opening to throw the ball, and he's not getting that type of field position. Boston College, the ball resting on the 21-yard line. And Flutie on the first down goes to the air. Why not? Tight end handed for a moment and then dropped it. Pelagata, the 200-pound sophomore, just couldn't bring it in. Well, you know, they say that, the, that Flutie had five passes dropped last week, that he would have been 20 for 27 for a lot more yardage. Now, that was what I was talking about. You see him, he rolls right, he rolled to the wide side of the field. He needs to be able to do that because of his size. He can find a crease in the defense. That was a pretty good pass and should have been caught. Flutie is 14 of 28, 130 yards, one intercepted, no touchdowns. Henry Walls called the defensive signals. He's having a phenomenal day at linebacker. Over the middle, it goes to the big tight end. Gieselman makes the catch at the 27-yard line. It'll be short of the first down. Great block in the backfield for Flutie as we have a little dance. A little dance down there on the turf. Flutie drilled that one. Just reared back, stood in the pocket, and drilled it into the receiver. McSwain made sure on the hit on that uh, try for first down, so it'll be third and a yard now for Boston College. All right, a tight end is always a great target. They're so big, and they run those hook patterns and stand there, and for a safety or a linebacker, you love to take shots at Murphy comes in at a tight end for Boston College. They go to the big man up the middle, and it looks like it is very close to the first down. Henry Walls making the tackle on Strahan. Steve Strahan. He's a junior, 6'1", 206 pounds. It is good enough for the first down. This shows the character of the Boston College team. Defensive front of Clemson's the best in the nation, and Perry weighs 320 pounds. They were able to seal him off on that play and get two yards. No easy pass against the Tigers. Strahan averaged 5.2 yards a carry in their first ball game of the season. 6.09 remaining in the third quarter of action. First and 10 from the 32. Once again, that tailback, and he's got speed to burn. Stratford. He's caught from behind at the 26-yard line by Rod McSwain. Very important sequence. Very important sequence. What does Doug Flutie do for you? This is a draw play. Watch him freeze the secondary. Hey, this is a pass, they're saying. But here comes the running back. Everybody's looking back thinking Flutie's going to throw the ball. He'll make you a better running team. This poor kid just runs out of gas. I think he's more surprised than anybody that he was out in the open. Stratford adds to 55 yards before that play in rushing. First and 10 for Boston College brings the fans alive here in Boston. Nice cut in. That's Kevin Bell, number 24. And he's met by Roy Brown from that bandit position. Clemson with a 16-3 lead, but Boston College on the move inside the 20-yard line. Stratford now, after a 42-yard gain on that last play, has 109 yards in the ball game. So it is not all Flutie today. Aluminum bleachers here in Boston, and you can hear them. Boston College is alive and driving. Second and five. That's Bell once again. They cut down the defensive end, and he goes out of bounds at the 12-yard line. First down, Boston College. Ronald Watson making his tackle. 
Take a page out of Flagler's book here. That play was designed to go inside, but he jumped outside and picked up the yardage as Clemson's defense closed. And the whole thing that started this drive off to a productivity was their first first down on a third down play in this half. Four minutes, 52 seconds to be played in the quarter. Boston College at the 12-yard line. What does Flutie do now? Does he go to the air after a successful running game? He goes back to Bell, and Bell is sealed out of there. What a fine play initially by Walls to give Pickett a time to come up from the, uh, the line. Edgar Pickett making the tackle, but Henry Walls forced the play. Boston College staying on the ground almost exclusively and very tough, as we've said time and time again. Clemson's defense, defensive front, one of the best, if not the best, in the nation. If you can get all the way down the field against that defensive front on the ground, you've got a pretty good offensive line. Devane at nose guard. It's second and 11. The big tight end is in there, Gieselman. Flutie checking off. Let's go to football, and he turns a loss into a gain. Stratford, the ball carry, Reggie Pleasant, the tackler. Mrs. Flutie is saying the ballet lessons have finally paid off. Watch this kid's <laughs> athletic ability. He's down. No, he's not. He throws it out there, knows exactly where the pitch man is, and they pick up much needed yardage. That was Devane that was hanging all over Doug Flutie. And so Devane, Boston College now with the deepest penetration that they've enjoyed today. So far, they've hit only one field goal in this ball game, but they're on the comeback trail. Devane outweighs Flutie by 100 pounds, and with him hanging on him, he made that pitch. That's athletic ability. Ball at the six-yard line, third and five for Boston College. Phelan split to the near side. Brennan is in the slot to the far side, and Flutie goes back to look for them. Touchdown! Tight end! is mobbed by his teammates and there you see the very happy Eagle fans here in Boston Massachusetts the Eagles getting their first touchdown and Kevin Snow comes in to try the extra point he's five for five this year this is a big extra point it means the difference between two field goals and a touchdown or else having to go for two points. So this is a pretty big field, a pretty big extra point. Brennan is the holder. Placement is down, the kick is up, and it looks like the kick is good. So with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. The Eagles put seven points on the board, and it's Clemson 16 to 10. We're on the goal line. This is man coverage. Clemson does not get pressure, and you can always look for the tight end drag. There's Gieselman right in the center of your picture. Man to man on the safety. He beats him across the middle, and that's an easy touchdown for BC, and they did most of that on the ground. And what blocking by Jack Bicknell holding out the vein. He's lying on a couch with... 16 to 10, three minutes, 50 seconds left in the third quarter. Williams and Driver are deep for Clemson. This is an unusual item of this ball game as we recheck that terrific touchdown pass. Okay, watch Flutie. He's not a drop back quarterback, but he'll set strong. It's a goal line defense, and the tight end is always tough on the goal line. He's so big. See the man in the corner of your screen fell down, fell down on the move. Man to man is tough to play. Brian Waldron is kicking off for Boston College. High but short. Williams from the one. Williams had a good cut inside. He chose to go outside. And it'll be first and 10 for Clemson at the 21-yard line. The touchdown pass, a six-yard pass to Gieselman. They took four minutes and 10 seconds on that 93-yard drive and 11 plays. And they put it in Clemson's head that this is not just a passing team, it's a running team also. And we're going into the fourth quarter, and you can bet the Clemson defensive coaches are taking note of that. There we go, Clemson Tigers. Weigler gets to the 24. Stacy Driver, correction. 
Driver at tailback, number 21, 5'10", 170 pounds, sophomore from Griffin, Georgia. Diossi, the leading tackler on this ball club, makes the stop from the linebacker position. And it'll be second down, eight yards to go for Clemson. The aluminum stands here at Alumni Stadium in Boston, Massachusetts, are popping. The feet are pounding them. Driver once again stops short of the 25-yard line, make it a gain of a yard. It'll be third and five. Football is an emotional game. Game can go for a quarter, two quarters. You start to doubt yourself. You get a drive like that put together by the offense. It always fuels the defense. You're standing on the sideline waiting for that score, waiting for that score. When you get in the end zone and you come back on the field defensively, you're ready. These guys are up, and they're playing tough for BC. Gaffney made the stop. Butler and Alley back in as your wide receivers now on a third and six. A tough situation for Mike Epley. Clemson trying to protect a six-point lead here in the third quarter. The pitch out. Williams, Braxton Williams on the carry. Gaffney made the stop short of the first down. It'll be fourth and about a half yard to go. That's just pursuit. Listen to this crowd here at BC. The Eagles are flying, and they know it. Just 33,000 here, but they're screaming like they're 70 or 80. Phelan is deep. Hatcher, the punter, standing on his 15. Beautiful snap. And another nice high floater. Good coverage. Phelan says, I want a fair catch at the 29-yard line. So decent field position for Boston College. Great field position if you take into consideration what they had the last series they went all the way. We said at the outset, these two teams are evenly matched. Personnel-wise, there really isn't that much difference. Maybe Clemson's defensive front has a little more depth a little more ability than Boston College, but this is the top echelon of college football, folks, and we've got a cliffhanger. You just saw Jack McNell, a very happy coach right now, as his BC Eagles have rushed for 189 yards compared with 153 for Clemson so far in this ballgame. First and 10, they call it at the 28, and Beastick the fullback up the middle. He's stopped by Jimmy Scott. I find it very interesting that Boston College has gone more to the running game. They must have seen something in the first half that told them they were able to use Perry and Devane in the middle to open up holes. A lot of times you get a guy 270 or 300 pounds going in one direction. You push him in that direction, and he'll create a hole himself just by leaving the spot that he was in. Flutie has passed for 130 yards, but it's been the running game. Second and five now for the Eagles. On the delay, reverse. Stratford to the 39. 40 the 41 Keith Williams and Chuck Richardson making the stop on Stratford let's watch let's watch the Eagles use Perry's aggressiveness against them a little block there get him going now keep him going he's behind the play boss see the man with the ball Boston College picks up big yardage by just letting Perry come they trail by six Phelan in the slot to the far side McKenzie is split to the far side First and ten at the 42. Back. Flutie over the middle and a tight end. Gieselman again. And Chucky Richardson, the junior linebacker, making the stop. Boy, now possibilities are opening up all over the place once you have some emphasis like that. Well, offense is establish yourself. It always has been if you establish yourself offensively, whether it be passing, running, whatever, you put the defense on the defensive. Boston College is doing that. Stratford has run for 124 yards in this ball game, second and two for Boston College. That's Bell. Bell in place of Stratford at the tailback spot gets the first down. James Robinson making the tackle. Kid Bell is playing a whale of a football game, and he's doing a lot of it on his own. He's able to slip tackles. Clemson is noted for being able to hit guys and knock them down. They're not doing a great job here in the second half. So Clemson, who held the catamounts last week to 38 yards on the ground, is having trouble with a terrific rushing game now of Boston College. I've well, got a timeout for measurement here, Art. We talked about that. Boston College blew out Morgan State. The same thing happened with Clemson and Western Carolina. First down, Boston College. That doesn't always help you especially when you have young linebackers, and Clemson does. Recognition factor here is a lot keener than it would be against Western Carolina. Ball resting in Tiger territory at the 48-yard line. 13 seconds before the fourth quarter starts. Doug Flutie, number 22, marking out the signals. 
That's Bell once again. Oh. Head on tackle at the 45. Oh. What a hit by Keith Williams, the freshman. Hey, you want to you write a book on linebacking? Here's the first chapter. Robinson coming over to help out and secure a gain of two, so it'll be second and eight. There he is right there. I'm a little surprised at Bell. He hasn't been getting hit cleanly all night. And right there, he got hit, and his head kept going, and his body stopped. So that's the end of the third quarter of play from Alumni Stadium in Boston. With the score, Clemson is 16 to 10. Clemson lead right now. Boston College, though, fighting back here in the second half. Flutie back to pass. Goes over the big man in the middle to Gieselman. And Gieselman inside the 35. Down to the 34, where he's met by Keith Williams. Flutie, uh, watch that's the, his 18th completion. Watch Kevin. the linebackers on this play. There's nobody there. Nobody there. As Gieselman makes the tackle, uh, the catch has time to bobble the ball and still gain yardage. And the reason for that is because Boston College has run the ball so effectively when they run play action, they're freezing those linebackers. They're young kids, and they haven't seen anything like this offense of the Eagles. The first down, and Flutie now is approaching the 200-yard mark through the air. And Stratford, Stratford for the outside after a gain of about six yards on the play. Tyrone Davis, his second straight hit. Stratford lost his shoe, but he doesn't mind. He's running pretty well. The entire offense of Boston College. That play, again, designed to go inside. A page out of the Clemson book. Take that tail back. Take him inside. Let him look for a hole. If there's no toll, no hole, give him the quicks to get outside. Okay, we've got a third and three. Bell is your tailback. Beastick, the fullback, is leading the block. Bell couldn't quite get to the block for the cut when James Robinson was there to meet him. But it is close to a first down. Very close to the first down. Let's see where they place the ball. Where they put the ball down, it is a first down at the 33 or 23 yard line. The crowd will always tell you when it's a home game if it's a first down long before the official. Right now, Boston College is winning the battle on the line of scrimmage, blowing Clemson off the ball. And remember, this is one of the best defensive lines in the country. Bell on the carry. He can't get through the two-team sandwich. And Keith Williams comes up to make the hit. Jemus also with some good action there. Kevin Jemus from Plymouth, Wisconsin. Boston College now with 17 first downs in this ball game. So that means they have collected six first downs in a little over a quarter. Yeah, Danny Ford's got a lot to think about, and the left side of his defense is tired. McNell is the center for Boston College. Reagan and McDonald, two starters from last year back to strength. Second and six. Stratford, linebacker missed him, and out of bounds on the far side after close to another first down. Jemus made the stop after Williams made the miss. I tell you, fatigue will not always cause you not to get to the play, but when you've got good running backs, you have to wrap your arms and stay in defensive position. Clemson's not doing it. They're getting there, but they're not able to make the hit and hold on to these guys, and that's fatigue. And Boston College, let me tell you, is taking it to the Tigers. We've got a timeout for measurement. It looks like it might be a little short. You now, it's kind of surprising. Clemson practices in extreme heat. It's very hot here this evening, although it's, I believe it's cooler on the field than it is in here. Definitely fatigue is playing a big part uh, in this drive, and it seems like Clemson should be in better condition than they are. A little bit of less than a yard short for the first down, so we'll have a third and less than a yard to go for a first down at the 14. Let's talk about those blockers again. Big Nell's the center. Reagan, McDonald, and Gieselman are the right side of that line, and if you've been noticing, Boston College is running almost exclusively to the right or the left side of Clemson's defense and having great success doing it. Big Nell's done a good job on that nose guard. There's no question about it. He's been able to take the nose guard for Clemson, whether it be Devane or Perry, the way they want him to go. He's like blocking a Volkswagen. Perry's in a nose guard right now. Boston College trailing by six points. Does he get the first down, though? Good tackle by Jeff Wells that time on Strahan. That's almost goal line defense by Wells. He's submarine to, submarine to play the running. Watch the ball carry. He tried to go up and over. But Wells is underneath him already. See that? 
That's great defense there, and there's just no place to go but down. Strahan with one touchdown in the first game of the year. We're going to have to have a measurement to see if it was enough for that first down. Strap a runaway train. Deep, you know, as a defensive player, I was a defensive player. The worst thing that can happen to you is to be on the field this long. Three and out, three and out. That was always our uh, our credo, and that meant after three plays, you'd like to stop and get off the field. This is a long drive. Clemson was on the field defensively a long time in the second quarter before halftime. First down, ball at the 13. Flutie hands it off to Stratford, and what a nice tippity toe through to the five to the four. Childers finally made the tackle as Stratford turns Let's sideways. Let's watch the blocking. Let's watch the blocking on this. They had been running right. Now they're going to come back the other way. Double team on the middle guard, a lead blocker, and there's the hole. The linebacker's caught up. He doesn't get there, and a great, great run as he stumbles forward for six or seven yards. Super individual five. move, and he goes over the 140-yard mark in this ball game. Stratford what quickness and what dexterity. Second down and only a yard for a first down. They have to get to the three-yard line for the first down. Touchdown! So the Eagles have tied this ball game with 12 minutes and 16 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Time for the extra point, then Kevin Snow. Talk about a replay of last year, Art. 14 to nothing at the half. It's 13 to three this year. Only last year it was Flutie that brought him back. This is power football. Take it to him, control the line of scrimmage football all the way. Beast Dick with his second touchdown of the year. The big pullback, number 40, moves it in. And Kevin Snow now tries to break the tie. He hasn't missed an extra point all year long now. It's down, it's up, close. But it's good. And the Eagles have taken over the lead here in the fourth quarter. Okay, we're going to see the touchdown now, and this is just the big kids against the little kids. Power football, move them out of the way and take your guy with the nose for the end zone, Bistek. Six touchdowns last year. There's the hole. You're not going to stop him. Linebacker carried into the end zone, and Boston College has got the lead this game. Okay, with the score, the Boston College Eagles 17, Clemson 16. Let's pause for these words. Waldron to kick off for Boston College when he gets the ball. That drive went 72 yards in 13 plays. 10 of the 13, Kevin, were rushing. They held the ball for 4 minutes and 41 seconds in that drive. You know, we are, are we talked about Flutie, and let's give Flutie his due. Let's face it. They came into this game thinking about him scrambling. Where's he going to throw it? What's he going to do? A lot of people probably had in the back of their mind that they weren't going to run the ball at all. So what do they do? They turn around and jam it down the Tigers' throat. Williams to the far side. Stacy driving to the near side. A high end over end kick. It'll be by Williams at the goal line. Takes the wedge. And he's down at the 17-18 yard line. The kicker, Waldron, made the tackle. Talk about the time element here. 12 minutes, 11 seconds to go in the game. It's not essential that Clemson scores here, but it's extremely important that they keep the defense on the sideline for at least a couple of sets of downs. These guys are tired. It's obvious. If Clemson is to stay in this game, their offense has got to control the ball for a while. Swing over the ball at center. Williams split to the far side. Epley, your quarterback. The fake to Mack, the pitch. Bobbled by Stacy Driver. Still loose. Boston's got the ball. Radachowski, a 5'10", 188-pound linebacker, scoops up the football. Well, one of the things about the option is you have to put the ball in the air, even if it's for only a few yards. 
And we don't want to do that. Here's Epley. Good force there. Flagler's got his eyes on the defense. Apparently does not drive her. I mean, does not pick up the ball. And there are the Eagles, a lot of them. One of them comes up with the ball. Good defense. Clemson, worst possible thing they could have done. Their third turnover of the ball game. Compared with four for Boston. They could get a first down. And not a touchdown. The handoff up the middle. Devane is there to make the stop after a gain of a yard. Not quite a yard. Beastick was the ball carrier. Number 40. Good shot of him there. Almost didn't get that ball to Beastick. That ball was, that handoff was almost intercepted. Second down. Make it nine yards to go inside the 10-yard line. Fired defense now to go against a fired up offense. Failing to the near side. The pitch back. It's that guy again. Stratford, touchdown. Troy Stratford. And this place is going crazy. the inside fill on the Clemson defense okay easy read everybody's going that way where are the linebackers great block there on number 55 walls and then they just clean him out and he walks in unmolested that's fatigue and the linebackers and the pursuit are just not getting there look at this they're not getting there a little bit short there walls doesn't make the play he finds the seam and goes in for a touchdown So Kevin Snow puts it through the uprights. And Boston College has turned things around here in the second half. The Eagles 24, Clemson 16. You know, this Stratford's having the game of his life. And there could be no one prouder right now than that offensive line. They've had to pass block, pass block, all kinds of rollout patterns to pass block for Flutie. But... There's some great feeling for an offensive lineman to see that back run right by him into the, in the end zone. You know, we talked about Clemson being behind. There was Danny Ford, and he has to be thinking, last week they did everything. They threw the ball, but they came out throwing. They tried to be a little more conservative this week, and now they find themselves behind late in the game. Clemson has never been traditionally a throwing team. 23% of the time in 1981 and 82, they threw the ball. We're getting down to 11 minutes, 25 seconds to go in this game. They need eight points. Pretty soon they're going to have to throw it. They've rushed for 251 yards in this ball game. Williams to the near side, driver to the far side. Clemson has got to get the offense on the move. Waldron puts his toe into it. His best kickoff yet. Williams, two yards deep. He's going to run it out. He's got an avenue now. And it was sealed off nicely. Oh. What happened was number 57, Ted Gaffney, a linebacker, forced him to the inside and was one of the few who could force him to the inside. If Ted Gaffney goes inside on that play, he'd be eating by himself all week. He was the leverage man on the kickoff, and I'll tell you, that's a pretty good run back. If he gets outside Gaffney, it's off to the races. The most that was ever put up against Clemson on the ground last year was 148 yards. Already, Boston has 251. Right up the middle, good bounce off, but can he go? No, somebody won't let him go. And that somebody was number 57. Ted Gaffney. You want, you know, it's, when you're playing in a football game as an individual, when things start going well for you and you start making a lot of tackles, you find yourself in on more and more plays because you gain confidence and you make the move a little quicker. That's happening to the Boston College defense, and all these guys are swarming now. Okay, second and seven yards to go at their own 24. Epley. Looking for the pass. He doesn't have anybody open. We've got a hanky thrown and done. Drops the ball at the 41-yard line. I think we've got a hold, though, when Epley was rolling out. Well, we definitely do have a hold. No question about it. A holding penalty on James Farr. He was the ACC player of the week last week. And it was nothing else he could do because it was Mike Epley's ribs or grab the defensive player by the shoe, which is what he did. And I think it was that back. big Rob Swanky, 6'2", 253 pounds, who's had an excellent ball game tonight. That's right, and Swanky was taking a beat on Epley. Farr did the only thing he could do. That's called a lookout block, and rather than let him go, 
He grabbed it. Now Boston College is not letting the Tigers off the hook. The Tigers trying to get back into this ball game after leading at halftime. Now they find themselves the Tigers trailing. Eagles 24 to 16. You really have to hand it to the Eagles. Tremendous amount of character on this team. Last year, Clemson, the defending national champions, leading them 14 to nothing in Death Valley. This year, dominating them on the scoreboard at the half, and they've come back in both games. A crucial third time that Clemson's been penalized. They've been penalized 25 yards to only 10 for Boston College. Second and 17, the ball at the 13. Epley lets it fly. 50 yards in the air, but it's out of bounds. Epley was hit hard at the goal line. It was intended for Ray Williams. Good defense by Boston College. If that ball was in bounds, a good chance to pick it off. They had a, a double zone over there, a man short and a man deep, and even though that player may have looked to be in the open, he was not. Scott Harrington from that left tackle spot really had a nice rush on Epley that time. Epley had the time to get rid of it. He just didn't have a man in the open. Clemson is a play-action team, and uh, when your play-action is no longer considered by the defense, or in other words, when you're behind and they know you're going to throw, it puts you in kind of a tough spot. Rulak to the near side. And play back to toss once again on a third down. He's got it short of the first down, out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. So it'll be fourth and two. A nice play, well-designed, but not quite far enough for the first down. Interesting, though, that that was a third and long, and they ran play action again. Even though everyone in the stadium knows they're going to throw, they still go with the play action because that's the way they're taught. It takes up valuable time and allows the defense to react to the pass. Phelan is back deep at his 25 to get set for a possible punt by Dale Hatcher. Hatcher has punted much more than he would like in this ball game, and this is his first rather flat kick. Well, once again, a fair catch called for. I think he's just a creature of habit right there because Hatcher's punts have been high, floating, lots of good coverage, and Phelan decided to fair catch that one a little early. So with 10 minutes and 14 seconds remaining to be played in the ball game, it's Boston College 24, Clemson 16. 250 yards, that last punt, thanks to the fair catch of 43-yarder. Boston College with 10-14 on the clock. They'd like to salt this game away or at least take enough time off the clock. Bell is your tailback. Flutie hands to Bell. Bell slips one tackle, but he's met there nicely by good linebacker pursuit. Keith Williams and then Jim Scott. Well, that's good. That was good linebacking there. That was a nice play by Scott as he got into the backfield and got a hand on the running back. And uh, he slowed it up for the rest of the defense. Good penetration. Stratford has a good chance to become back of the year <laughs> with this ball game, or at least back of the week. Now, the thing that always, uh, it's an official's timeout, the thing that always I wondered about was how come the offense doesn't get tired when they're going down the field on a 60-yard drive? And, the, you know, as a defensive player, I used to say, well, how could I be tired and these guys <laughs> not be I think tired? it's a matter of adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. It's like they're headed to the end zone and you're backing towards the end zone. I guess it makes you tired when you go backwards. Flutie has passed for 163 yards in this game. Second down and 10 now for Boston College. Ball at their 30. Penalty flag. The procedure probably. Let's check it out. Procedure on Boston College. It cost them five yards. This game is by no means over. You know, we're talking 9.36. Touchdown, two-point conversion, and we have, what, another tie? Could it be? There's Bicknell, and he's uh, rather frustrated at that last play call. Cowboy Jack. Cowboy Jack, you know, they call him Cowboy Jack because he likes uh, country western music and riding horses. I wonder if he ever rode a tiger. Gio Quinto, number one, came out of the game very rapidly after that illegal procedure. So it's second and 15. Going back to the running back, take that clock down. Perry and Scott in to make the tackle. It's the 15th yard marched off against Boston College in this game. Both teams have three penalties, but Clemson has had 25 yards in penalties and some of them in crucial times. Nine minutes and six seconds remaining in the ball game. Third and 14. Now leading 24-16. What do you do? Phelan to the near side and Brennan, his favorite target to the far side. Gieselman, who's been very active at tight end, is to the near side. Stratford, your leading running back in this ballgame, is a tailback. 
Stratford gets the call. Nice quickness and beautiful ballet moves. He gained a yard out of an impossible situation. James Robinson making the stop with help of Billy Davis, who Davis coming into the ball game rather than receive the punt, as John Mahalik will be the, the punter. The man, the white-haired gentleman that we had just a second ago is Tom Harper of Clemson. Takes a lot of pride in this defense, and you know, he's feeling a little hurt now with uh, inside 10 minutes to go in the game, his defense being pushed around. Beautiful punt. Taylor at the 45. Decided just a little bit late to run it, and he's brought down there by number 49. 49 is Pelagana. And look at the first downs, Kevin. Boston College now with 24 first downs to Clemson's seven. Well, I've always thought that statistics were, you know, as the coach used to say, statistics are for losers. Uh, you can go back and, uh, and use statistics any way you want, but I think that particular statistic tells a story, especially in the second half here. Clemson at their 36. Up the middle, fumbled, give the ball to the other team. It's David Thomas all alone to pounce on the football. Now, wait a minute. Are they going to give him the football, or do they say he was down? Might have been dead. Let's check it out. <laughs> it's going to be Clemson's football. In the last three sessions for Clemson series, they've punted twice and had one turnover and have run only nine plays. Okay, we've got and a man down on the field. Let's take a look at this. I have my doubts, but a lot of action in the middle of the line. Couldn't really tell. This is Matt. That's a fumble. Hey, hey, guys. That's a fumble as clean as can be. And the most surprised people, I think, on the field were the Clemson Tigers when they got the ball back on that. Definitely a fumble. I got somebody down on the field with what looks like a knee injury. And it might be swing. Let's wait and check. Okay, that's obviously a, a conference between the official and the, and the head coach of Boston College, Jack McNeil. I haven't the slightest idea what the official could be saying other than I didn't see it. There's no flag, so it's not a penalty. Here's Mack goes into the line, and he's hit right here. And the ball gets loose, his knees aren't down, and Boston College recovers the ball. Horrible decision by I mean, the officials, and Jeff Cruz is the injured Tiger who's coming off the field. That's a great break for Clemson. That's been a fumble since I was in the third grade. And unless there's a new rule change this year, uh, the officials missed that one. I noticed Dan Ford's not on the field arguing, so I guess he realized it's a good break. Jeff Cruz, 6'7", 250-pound junior from Lake City, Florida, comes off the field. David Clayton comes in for him. It's a second and three still. That was not a first down advantage. Ball at the 43. Back up the middle. What a job he's doing running single-handedly. Gets inside the 45 down to the 42-yard line. Gaffney. Gaffney. Ted Gaffney, number 57, is having himself a good ball game. Don't make a tackle that far downfield, though, is no source of pride. Kevin Mack with a nice run as he leaped over a, a, a tackler there to gain even bigger yard. Okay, it gave the Tigers a first down. What an important call. 7.27 left in the game. In the open, and he stumbles and falls. Flowers. Kenny Flowers. In the first ball game of the year, five carries, averaging six yards a carry, Kevin. Watch the blocking on the right side of the line now. And Flowers is going to take a little jump, too. He gets a little bit clean out. Hey, jumps over, a little bit of arm or a leg there, and he's in the open, but he's so excited he slips down. Another first down play, however, from the 32. The Tigers on the move. Alley in motion. We go up the center once again. Loose football. Austin gets it back. Diossi jumping on the football. What did I tell you about Diossi? Had two fumble recoveries and an interception last week. That's his second fumble recovery. Quick handoff. Mack. He has the ball. Mack does. Gets away from us for a minute, but right in there, he's hit. 
Swanky probably put the hit on him, number 92. The ball just laid there. Nobody saw it until finally Diossi, who's got a nose for it, jumps on it. Clemson with two turnovers in the first half has added to their misery. They say everything evens out break-wise. Six minutes, 55 seconds on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Stratford, the ball carrier. Gains a yard before he's met by Reggie Pleasant. Great Pleasant. Loose again on the outside. Pleasant, the quarterback, is the only man out there. Held his ground, got down in good defensive position. Didn't go for the fake and make attack. A big play. Stratford might be uh, tired. <laughs> We're all even up in turnovers, four and four. Brennan to the near side. You've got Phelan to the far side. 6-18 in the fourth quarter. Stratford, what a hole. Bounced out of bounds at the 39. Okay. See if you can watch Clemson's defense. They're moving. You can't see them here. They're moving as the ball is snapped. Now watch the block on the corner. Boom, there goes Pleasant. Beast it. Good block by the fullback. Another missed tackle, and yet another first down for BC. Hey, these, these films on Monday for Clemson are going to be horror movies. Milton made the stop finally for the Clemson Tigers, and another factor is a long, sustaining drive by Boston College takes so much time off the clock. They took four minutes and 41 seconds off the clock in their last touchdown drive. They lead it 24 to 16. Quarterback rolls. Is he in trouble? Throws just before he goes out of bounds. It's caught at the 39-yard line. Make it the yes, the 39. And coming back to make the catch was Pelagata. Where has Doug Flutie been? His running backs are getting tired, so he takes it into his own hands. A great play by Flutie. He was almost caught in the backfield. This is a little later as he's simply out running the defense. Little signal. He says, come on back and catch this one just before you hit the ground. And that's what happens. Here you got an end zone view of it. Not a pretty pass, but a great catch. Phelan made the catch. And after 257 yards on the ground, Flutie puts it up for the first down. Boston College has gained 440 yards in this ball game. 5.45 remaining fourth quarter from the 40. Booty straight back. He's got his man. Phelan. Five. Touchdown. Phelan beating Pleasant on the play. You know, Gerald Phelan was supposed to have been injured this week. What a game he's having. When he gets healthy. There he goes, Gerald Fallon, and he'll be a celebrity around campus this week. Kevin Snow's been active. We'll do the kicking. With five minutes and 37 seconds left in the fourth quarter, Boston College dominates. Brennan, who usually sees most of the action catching passes, will hold for the kicker. Snow's boot is up. So far, he still has a perfect season of extra points. And with 537 remaining, it's Eagles 31, Clemson 16. We talked about play action. This is when play action works. Although this isn't play action, it's a straight drop back. Flutie looks, he's wide open. You know, Pleasant has got to be tired coming up on all those runs, and Phelan's got to beat by 10 yards. He even has to come back a little bit. Makes the catch and goes in, and now we've got a big bulge. So a 71-yard drive in only four plays. Capped off by the 39-yard touchdown pass. Flutie to Phelan. Williams and Driver deep at the goal line. Waldron getting set to kick. You know, coach has said on the sideline, the only thing that can beat us now is a big play. We've got 5.37 to go in the game. So stay in position, spread the defense out across the field on this kick, and make sure they don't break the big one. What do you do for Clemson? You go underneath? Clemson's in a tough spot. They don't throw the ball as a rule, and now they've got to go with a passing game almost exclusively. Be interesting to see how well they do. Eagles leading at 31 to 16. And a beautiful kickoff. Driver, well, he, he shouldn't take this one out. It's too deep, but he decides to. Five yards deep. 
Driver to the outside does not make it back to the 15-yard line. Now you would wonder why Driver would take the ball out of the end zone. An offensive, uh, a kick is an offensive play, and it's an opportunity to get a good running back in the open field. That's a pretty good decision by Driver. He's halfway into the end zone, but if he pops it, he can get a touchdown quick. Especially with the time remaining and down 31 to 16. Peretti is now in at quarterback. Incidentally, the nice tackle on that last play, Baza. John Baza from Keene, New Hampshire. Taken in motion. Peretti back, looks over the center. He's having trouble finding anyone open and has to run it up the middle. Time consuming, but he takes it to the 19 yard line. Swanky, who's had an outstanding ball game, five tackles last week, but has really forced the action in this ball game. He makes the stop this time. Clemson with 201 yards compared with Boston College's 480 yards. Eagles have the uh, luxury of now going into not a full prevent, but they're able to drop deep and give them the underneath pass here. It's going to make it tough on Peretti. On, uh... 4.59 in the fourth quarter. Peretti has everyone out. And here comes the student body. On the blitz, David Thomas. Dave Perella also from his strong safety spot was on the blitz. Peretti is not the runner. Epley is the runner. You hate to be predictable, but Clemson now in this position is predictable. The Eagles are coming, and that's it for Anthony right there. Boston College will play Rutgers next weekend at Giant Stadium, while Clemson will be hosting the Georgia Bulldogs in what will be a crazy affair. Peretti with the end zone to his back. Has to hand to that first man, Williams, Braxton Williams. And with less than four minutes remaining in the ball game, Boston College does the job defensively. Diossi with his hands in the air as he races off the field, becomes the cheerleader. with the end zone line at his back foot. Scott Williams, the snapper, got a beautifully high floating punt away. Oh, what a break. Phelan loses the ball, and Clemson dives on it. Now, was that a muff? Well, he missed it pretty cleanly. The question is, did he touch it? I find it hard Crawford, to believe. Crawford pouncing on the ball. I think he might have touched it with a hand as it went down. Oh. Boston College. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at this. Now, this could be so bad that it's good. But this is the same guy that caught the touchdown a minute ago. Wait He's got good hands. Now, how could he miss this? He also had a fair catch in what he should have caught it. He was oh. off balance. Oh, he touched that ball. He touched that ball, and it's got to be Clemson's ball, right? Well, it's early in the season. I mean, is that the rule? Trouble. The rule, yeah, that's the rule. If he touches it, and he clearly touched that. Well, even if it was a muff, it would be Clemson's ball. 31 to 16, Flutie fires it out there. And Flutie can't get it to the receiver. Let's check it out again. Watch there. It did breeze his hands as it went down through, I'm sure. Well, it certainly looked like that. And that's two calls. Now, that fumble by Clemson earlier and that play, those are two pretty big plays that, uh, that the officials apparently we're not right on top of. We're, we're kind of far from the field, but it appeared that he caught that, uh, he touched that ball. 324 in the fourth quarter. The Eagles leading 31 to 16. Stratford, shy of the first down on a second and 10. He's forced out by Roy Brown. This is another play that takes advantage of the Clemson pursuit and their aggressiveness. A brilliant game plan by Boston College. They've used and there's, uh, there's Danny Ford wondering uh, what happened to his game plan. A brilliant game plan by Bicknell. They've used Clemson's aggressiveness time and time against them. And then, of course, when Clemson got tired, they just blew him off the ball. Excellent, excellent game plan by the Eagles. Third and six. Doug Flutie, the quarterback. Once again, up the middle. Perry ran right past the ball carrier. This is exactly what I'm talking about. 
They let Clemson come to the ball. They run those little delays, and then poor tackling contributes, and they gain big yardage. Boston College has played it to a tee, and Clemson, very frankly, has had some pretty serious breakdowns defensively. After Stratford has carried for 166 yards, they give the ball to Bell, taking the place of Stratford. And he takes the ball to the 40-yard line and a first down. Three minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Linebackers look like they want to come, and they both do. They head off to Bell again, though, and the gap is closed very nicely at the line of scrimmage. We're very much looking forward to Clemson regrouping and next week meeting the Georgia Bulldogs, which is one of the fine rivalries in college football, both on Raycom and ESPN, for your pleasure. You've heard about going to the dogs. Well, the dogs are coming to Clemson next week, and that'll be a whale of a ball game. At this point in the game, Clemson should be trying to strip the ball from Boston College, but I don't see any of that aggressiveness. Let's take a look here. Gain of a yard on the play. Strahan on the carry, but 492 yards total offense compared with 191 of Clemson. Boy, you could have lost a house or a mortgage on that before the ball now, game. This is second half, too. A lot of that is in the second half. And, you know, the Tigers are known for being a very aggressive team, and I have not seen a tremendous amount of aggressiveness here in the second half from Clemson. They're not attacking the offense, and they're not trying to strip the ball in this situation, which is very odd. More than 380 team. yards in the second half. Yeah. A minute 38. Stratford has got the first down. Childers the tackle. There's a, and that's not the type of tackle where you take the guy's feet out from under him or you drive him to the ground. Childers is hanging on for dear life. At this point in the game, you want to win. You've got to get that little ball. And they're not, they're not going after the ball. I don't think it's because they don't understand that they should be. I think they're dog tired, and they really do look tired. Now. First down by half of the football. So Boston College... Not just content with a 31-16 lead. A lead like that can dissolve rapidly in any football game, but with one minute and 20 seconds to go, Phelan comes back into the ball game. First and 10 at the 30, would they go long? They did it before. Martin to the near side. Phelan to the far side, the pitch back. Strahan is hit by Childers, who was coming through. Childers from his strong safety spot. 52 seconds left in the ball game. Well, I tell you, Tigers have a lot of regrouping to do before next week's game against Georgia. Georgia Bulldogs are just that. They're Bulldogs, and they're tough. How would you like to be Rutgers watching this game? <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know that I would. Well, the Eagles have certainly pleased their fans. As you see the clock, less than 30 seconds now. Second and 11. Perry looked like he might have been offsides. He sure got a great jump. I don't see any flag, though. And it's just take the clock down. 17 seconds left. No reason to stop the clock. Boston College sure will stop it. Let's listen to the countdown. College with 28 unanswered points in this ball game for a 31 to 16 victory. What an awesome second half by the Eagles. Now we saw them come back last year to tie the ball game at 17-17. Clemson missing a field goal from 43 yards out with eight seconds for a possible win. Coming into this ball game, we thought it was going to be a passing game from Boston College, but a guy named Stratford entered the picture and some terrific blocking. Is this an upset? I think is, is the question. Last year you had a tie ball game. That was considered an upset, even though Boston College didn't win. Here you have a game, a total dominance in the second half from a team that trailed by 10 points in the first half. Why? Well, you know, teams change over a year. You lose players in key positions. Clemson lost some pretty good players on defense. Terry Kennard, Hedden at the Bandit. They have to replace those kids, and they replaced them with freshman players. 
And here you run again, run up against a team like Boston College, second game of the year after a walk with Western Carolina, and the holes begin to show. I think that's basically what happened, and now you have a regrouping, rebuilding job that's become painfully apparent to Dan Ford. Jack Bicknell, his 15th win at Boston College against nine losses in one tie. We'll be back with more Clemson football after this word from Burger King. You.